Namaskaram, Victoria, wonderful <laughs> I've… I've just been a uh, little while ago been watching all your magic points that you scored. Whoa, what a girl, huh? Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. It's… it's… it's my… my true honor to… to speak with you. Um, I'm… Uh, I'm very, very excited and uh, I've been… Uh, actually thinking about this this moment for for a while now and i'm just uh, very very happy that uh that i'm here today speaking with you so it's it's my honor victoria the thing is uh, right now this conscious planet movement mm, well it's picked up very well on the ground lots of heads of state are all coming together all un agencies we have formed partnerships with them they're all going yes a lot of uh you know, p political leaders, social celebrities, movie stars, musicians particularly, sports people are also coming in now. So it's going very well on the ground. So from March 21st, I'm riding from London to India through 25 nations. Mm -hmm. So this is 100 days. From March 21st, 100 days, we want the whole world to talk about soil. So. Yes. Uh, simple thing is uh, whatever tweets you do, whatever messages you do, just instead of saying I love you, you say save soil because that's the only way we can express our love to future generations. <laughs> really. Yes. Yeah. And and one of the one of the uh, things I've I, I have been bef before uh, before anybody uh, reached out to me, I, I've watched a lot of videos uh, about this movement um, before and. Uh, I love the um, idea and the way you're describing that for uh, future generation. You know, my generation. I'm. I don't think of myself as as old. <laughs> Still only 32, <laughs> but I have a son who is five years old, and I feel like to uh, get uh, him educated on on those type of things is is really really important, and and that's you know what his generation is the one who is going to be part of, part of you know uh, future yes. and probably affected more more than than our generation so i i always uh i that's kind of my mission also as a parent to make sure that uh, i give him tools and understanding of of the planet uh i grew up on 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 the not on the farm but my my grandparents my parents they they had a summer summer house where they taught us all about how to uh, how to understand the soil, how to grow vegetables, how to be more in in touch with nature. So uh, I grew up knowing and understanding that, but in you know in society that that we kind of live it now with all the technology and everything, it, it becomes mm. um, a, a bit further away from more more uh, natural uh, natural ways. So something that I would love, you know, also for my son to understand and be in touch with. Um, and thank you for, you know, bringing the light to, to this issue. And I hope that uh, obviously with your mission and little part of what I, I can do uh, is to educate people more on the importance of it. So uh, the important thing is everybody who matters in the world, we do it in a coordinated way. Uh, that for these 100 days, we want the entire world to speak of soil from March 21st, 100 days. So that's what we are activating. I don't want to call this my moment uh, because this is not about me. This is about life on the planet. This is a generational responsibility. See, every responsible scientist in the world right now is pointing out, by 2045, we will be producing 40 percent less food and our population will be 9.2 billion. That is not a world in which you would want to live. Uh, compared to me, uh, you're thirty-two, you're still a baby only, okay? <laughs> so, and you have a baby and a smaller baby, you know, in twenty years' time, where I will be is a question mark, but uh, all of you will be around on this planet and it's very, very important because soil is not our property. It's a legacy that's come to us from previous generations. Keeping it alive and passing it on to next generation is a most important responsibility that we have. People have been dodging soil as an issue for a variety of reasons, I don't want to go into the politics of it, but 
Right now, in the last two years that I've been working on this project, I have spoken to many, many scientists, many heads of states, various leaders, celebrities. Till now, I have not met one person who's spoken in negative. All of them want this to happen. Because one important aspect of the project and the movement is that it is not against anybody. This is not against uh, chemical fertilizer, this is not against oil company, this is not against anything. This is about keeping the soil alive. This is not about, you know, what country you belong to, what uh, race you are, what religion you are. It doesn't matter what… whatever you may believe in, but essentially all of us come from the soil and we definitely go back to the soil one way or the other. So… <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It reminds… it reminds me of the… of uh, your question and answers uh, that… that… that you do uh, with… with the sessions where you talk if people don't believe that you're gonna die someday, that… that you're gonna be… end up in a big surprise <laughs> at some point, so… Uh, yeah, that… that… that reminded me of that. Um, if you don't mind uh, me asking, I wanted to… Um, kind of ask you this question. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a professional athlete and uh, we have this uh, kind of, uh, I think the culture where a lot of people talk when you are an athlete, you have to go through pain and no pain, no gain is one of the <laughs> things that is a biggest slogan. And Throughout, throughout uh, my career and throughout my childhood, you know, I had a pretty uh, not easy way to, to get to, um, to my uh, professional career, but it was always about, you know, kind of fighting the adversity and proving people wrong. And that was the core of my motivation to make it to, to the top of my sport. Uh, and then it faded very quickly after I, I've got there. And I realized that that type of motivation that came from other people was never sustainable for me. And I'm finding the new, I'm finding a new way of, uh, you know, a, a new way of motivation in my career. And I realized more and more with practice that I do that it's all about inner confidence and in how, what you can do uh, and how you can uh, motivate yourself. And it doesn't depend on anybody else. So that's a, that's an interesting uh, way of completely different approach in, you know, in sport. And I see a lot of young people that I love to mentor. And, and when, when I think about myself as a younger uh, kid, I wish I had somebody who, you know, maybe could have explained to me a little bit better. So that's kind of… Uh, when you were 15, I was still around, huh? When you were 15, yeah, I was still was. around <laughs> <laughs> It was, but there was no YouTube. <laughs> that, that there was no YouTube, there was harder to to yes. <laughs> get the information that that you that's so easily accessible now, and and that's where I feel like with younger generations that some of who are responding really well uh, uh, to me, uh, how I can also explain that to to them a little bit more because it's it's a very interesting dynamic that doesn't I think ever talked a lot about sport, and I was wondering if you could give me some thoughts. See, uh, Victoria, it's like this. Do you enjoy hitting the ball? Yes. You love hitting the ball, isn't it? So, that's all it takes. See, the problem is, most sports people are going like this. It's, it is not necessary, because your… your uh, sport, art, these uh, areas, arenas of life are such that you're doing something that you love to do. At the same time, everything else is happening out of that. So, when you're doing something that you love to do, you just have to love little stronger, that's all. You should not love victory, you should not love the trophy, you should not love the money. You should just love hitting the ball. If that is very strong in you, you will hit the ball really well. If you hit the re ball really well, somebody else will keep the score. <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's all yeah. that matters. Yeah. So unfortunately, 
you know, people are always wanting to win the game. See, in yoga there is a saying, if you have one eye on the goal, you got only one eye to find your way, which is very inefficient. You need both the eyes to take the next step. So, every shot that you play is more important than you winning. Winning will happen because you got the right shots, not because you want to win. Everybody wants to win. Everybody has a desire to win. Desire is not going to get us there. What is going to get us there is just that we are doing what we are doing really well. You know, like here you must come, someday you, you will definitely come to the yoga center and see how everything is being done. We have business programs where top CEOs come. They're all looking at the place and say, Sadhguru, how does it run like this? Everything is happening like clockwork, but nobody is managing anything, everything is happening well. How is this? So I told them, see, you are all devoted to the goal, you want to achieve something. We are just devoted to the process. Because yeah. if you do the process well, the goal will come. Not because you desire the goal, it is going to happen to you. Every fool wants to win, all right? But will they win? <laughs> no. It's not going to happen yeah. out of your desire. So being devoted to the process, hitting the ball is the process. And that's all that matters, how you hit it. Uh, whether it's in or out, somebody is going to look at it. What is the point? Somebody is going to look at it. Who is the winner? Somebody is going to look at it. You don't have to look at all those things. You don't have to be motivated like this. Just with great joy, hit the ball and your body and your mind functions at its best when you're joyful. I would like to see uh, athletes laughing. I know the… Uh, uh, you know, I keep always uh, using this with athletes because they're so serious and they're like… Uh, you know, they're looking like death. What is the point? You're doing something that you love to do and what is the point of this? So, I always give yeah. this example of uh, the only one athlete that I know who's always grinning is Ronaldinho <laughs> You know, the footballer, <laughs> such, a, true, such a big grin on his face, no matter what sort of match, winning or losing, because you're doing something that you love to do and you will do it best, only if you are in that kind of state. Otherwise, what your competency is, somewhere a few percentage points below that you will be, that's not how it should be. What your physical competency is, you must go a few percentage points over that, not below that. And those things happen to every athlete, I'm sure you have experienced it. The moments when you are totally there, playing it with great passion to, for the game itself, those moments you exceed your limits. Other… other moments when you're tense about wanting to win, you come below your own competence. In our lives, if we do not do what we cannot do, there's no problem. But if we do not do what we can do, that's a disastrous life. That should not happen to us. Yeah. Yes, that's… that's… that's a lot… a lot to… not a lot to think about, but I… I love the… how simple you always put things in where like, okay, why didn't… why didn't I think of that? <laughs> why didn't I think of that before? But it… it definitely is… Um, I think it's it's very cultural where well, the athletes need to look a certain way and they have to not show any weaknesses and and you know as you said being you know very like focus and and well focus I think is one thing but being looking like angry is, uh, <laughs> if you're laughing if you're laughing your opponent may not know what to do <laughs> exactly but the intimidation <laughs> process you know the intimidation process happens sometimes before the game and it does work at, at certain moment when maybe you're not that aware of of the game that is played with intimidation but no no i am aware of all the mental games that people play but i'm saying this is also a game see if you are just no, no, joyful I mean not you. no 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 i, I, mean, I mean to say among among the athletes i'm saying well, especially in the boxing, you know, I've been uh, talking to some of the boxers like Mike Tyson and others. The whole thing is about intimidation. The previous night itself, it'll start, start saying all kinds of things, all this. See, that is one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is, you go joyfully, if you even… If they may not be willing, but you go and shake their hands and uh, say nice things to them and you play joyfully, you will see that will also kind of put them off the rails. But the important thing is not necessarily putting them off the rails. The most important thing is you never go off the rail, isn't it? 
Yes. Yeah, it's definitely about how it makes makes you feel. I've I've noticed that with the more obviously with my career and for me to go through um more of a of spiritual process that I've been uh, I I have started in June of 2020 is the what you do something is how it makes you feel not about other people and what other people do is also how, how you take it and, and how you feel about it instead of having the other people affecting how you feel. So there's definitely been um, a very uh, eye-opening process for me. And I really enjoy the journey that I'm, um, I'm learning. Um, I just wanted to mention I've done um, a Shambhavi Kriya in yeah, October. <laughs> yeah, in October, and uh, it was it was very interesting because I had I was doing it during my tournament, and I asked I asked my my um, uh, our, our referee if they could put my matches later so I can do my program <laughs> in the morning, <laughs> and. And and they did help me out, so I was able to to do the the, the completion of, of the hours because when I signed up, I wasn't sure um, where I'm gonna be and what my schedule will look like. But I was really committed to to finishing it, and um, uh, it was such a interesting process because in the beginning, when I started the meditation, and I always thought that I could. I don't know how to do meditation and I, it's, it's very difficult and I don't know how to do it. And then slowly I started to just accepting the moment and how it is. And, and it, it, it really is my uh, medicine every day when I do my meditation. And I've noticed uh, one day where I didn't do it, the difference, how, how, how I feel and how, much clearer i i i think and it's 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 tr it's really transforming so i wanted to thank you for um, <laughs> it's all yours uh victoria you are 32 i feel you need a little bit of uh, upgrade within yourself if you give us one week a year we will do something with you which will definitely heighten everything because i i'm not saying you're old okay you're 32 as i said you're a baby <laughs> But I'm saying, as an athlete, well, I see when you were twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, you've done fantastic. But uh, because body is not the same at twenty-two what you are and thirty-two what you are, now it becomes more based on your experience and skill rather than your… just your strength. So when this happens, how to conserve yourself, how not even to make one extra movement that is not needed uh, is something that you have to learn. Because as you get yeah. older, conserve, conserving ourselves becomes very important to be effective. We can't do the same wild uh, kind of things that we were doing when we were twenty-two. Uh, so, Absolutely. for that process, as an athlete, I'm sure you know these things. But uh, if you spend a week in a year, either in United States or in India, we will set you up with something. Uh, there's enough space, you can also come with your child, it'll be good for him also. Yes, I, I actually, um, um, because I do meditation every morning and uh, my son knows that please don't disturb mommy when if he wakes up not to do, not to disturb me uh, during my meditation. And he starts to imitate me a little bit because <laughs> the way, the way, the way I think a little bit about parenting is uh, saying something to your child is maybe valuable, but showing by example, I think it it gives yeah. so much more, so much more benefit um, to to them. And I try to approach it uh, with everything um, like that. And my mom told me a couple times that uh, if I go to work early or something, that he just sits down and just you know tries to do a meditation and <laughs> yeah and actually I have some pictures of when I was playing the match and he was watching my match he's sitting in the in the, in the meditation <laughs> mode because <laughs> so so yeah. um I I would love to introduce him a little bit more um 
to that because I know how helpful it has been for me. And again, um, I wish I knew that, you know, when I was a kid, but where uh, I'm from, it's not, it's not uh, very known. It's, it's not really talked about. Uh, my parents never, uh, never been introduced to uh, any of that. They probably still don't understand what I'm actually doing with meditation, which is, which is absolutely fine. But I would love to introduce my son a little bit more. And I, I uh, watched the video where you, you speak about your daughter and how she was traveling with you uh, everywhere you, you went. And she grew up with, um, you know, different surrounding, different people. And my son is a little bit in that way. He travels with me and he spends a lot of time around adults and a lot uh, around uh, kids as well. And um, one of the very interesting points you mentioned is that we don't really you know, teach our kids to be one way or the other way is to help them give and give them the tools how they can flourish and develop their own personalities. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it is the approach that I feel the most connected with, but sometimes it, it's, it, it's, you know, I lose myself with how do I need to kind of impose sometimes a little bit of rules and, and a bit of a structure uh, and compared to, you know, kind of given, given uh, freedom and... Victoria, uh, Vic Victoria, you still haven't seen anything. Once the boy becomes nine, ten, he'll give you the works. <laughs> yeah, still, uh, I guess I have time. He's only five. He's only five, so I have time. <laughs> Well, it's okay, children uh, are who they are, you, it's not that you shouldn't mold them at all, but you don't try to mold them to a point that they have to fit into the block that you have in your head. They don't have to fit into any block. The less blocked up they are, the better they are, because the idea is the next generation should be freer than us and more joyful than us, better than us, not less than us or not even like us. They don't have to be like us. So, I mean, you don't worry about the boy, he will grow up well. See, all it need takes is a loving and joyful atmosphere. And you make sure the child never witnesses anger, jealousy, hatred, uh, you know, these kind of things that he should never see such things, he should not know what it is. If he grows up like that, he will grow up into a beautiful human being. Uh, maybe he will… he may become an athlete, he may not become an athlete, that's not our business. That's his choice. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't… Uh, I don't have a specific plan for him. I… I… I didn't… Um, I was… I was actually very fortunate that, you know, a lot of parents of athletes have a specific… specific idea of who they have to be and what they have to do. And I've been… I've been lucky that my parents wanted me to be the best that I can be and what I… what… what I want to be. So I've, I don't take it for granted looking at, you know, other, other situations. So uh, when I think about what my son wants to be, I, I just want to support him and who, whatever he wants to be and give him tools to be able to do what he wants to do. In, but In today's Western society, one important uh, thing, challenge you will have is to protect the child from influences which are negative both uh, offline and online influences, there is simply chemicals all over the place and you know, th that one thing, yeah. if you just make sure that they don't make those kind of associations, rest of it is, uh, you know, ch children will grow up well <laughs> One One of the things that I… Um... I actually, I, I've never been really a, a drinking alcohol or anything like that, but I, I thought that if I will have to have a talk with my son, you know, in 10, 15 years about alcohol and he ever sees me drinking alcohol, that will be not a very compelling uh, argument for, from my side. So mm -hmm. I, I don't drink any alcohol at, 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 at all. And I, I did it for myself, but also in mind with, with that. And I said, okay, if he if he doesn't ever see me doing that, then hopefully I can I can at least try to give a compelling argument, <laughs> and then we'll see what happens. Yes. 
<laughs> Very important. What example... What example you set because children are not listening to you, they're only looking at you carefully, they're observing everything that you are, how you sit, stand, they're observing you, not with any intent, simply because they're curious about everything, they're looking at it. But uh, they're never listening to the advices that you're giving them. So the example is the most important yeah. thing <laughs> Definitely, definitely. Um, I don't... I don't want to take too much of your time. I know you're okay. very, very busy and I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity to speak to you and uh, I will definitely come to the... to the center uh, mm -hmm. to uh, continue no. my practices and... In the month of March, April, where are you, uh, uh, Victoria? In March, I am... I'm going to be in the United States. I'm going to be in California and mm -hmm. in Florida. Mm -hmm. And in April, I will be in Europe. Oh, April, I'm passing through Europe. Uh, uh, I don't know where you are, but I'm going through all the 17, 18 nations across Europe. So, hopefully wow. we will bump in somewhere. Maybe... I hope so. Uh, maybe we can give you a short ride, one 10, 20 kilometer ride for you just to have an experience. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. That would be really amazing. I will... Uh, believe me, I'll you're safe with me. With... You, believe me, you're safe with me. <laughs> Because I've... Well, I've I, gotten I, this old without breaking a bone on a motorcycle, that means I'm good, you know <laughs> I've... I've heard you talk about your... Uh, your wild rides where you... you don't even need to look because you... you've memorized the... the roads uh, so well, so... I... 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 I believe that you are a very, very good rider, so... <laughs> I will... I would love to... I would love to join, but... Thank you so much. Thank you, Victoria, Victoria really and uh, all the best for whatever uh, future tournament you have this year. You must do well. We are... So I'll be watching you, you must do well. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sadhguru. I appreciate it. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you.